So today, I just finished watching the first movie of the new Hathaway trilogy, and I gotta say, for me, it definitely exceeded my expectations. Now, if you haven't watched the movie yet, I'm going to start off with some general impressions first, and then I will give a spoiler warning once we get to that stuff. So, for this first impression, I watched the movie in Japanese, with Dutch subtitles, because I could, until I couldn't take it anymore and then switch to English. If you translate ginger ale to lemonade and then directly translate established English terms like mobile suit, which they even say in katakana in the movie, then you've lost my respect. That's just not the way to do things. To give an example from Star Wars, any Dutch Star Wars fan will still call a lightsaber a lightsaber. To directly translate stuff like that just comes across as childish or tacky, which the rest of this movie was anything but. What really caught my attention here was just how beautiful the whole thing was and how alive and real everything felt. Like at some points in the movie, I even felt like I was watching a real life movie, but with like an anime filter on top of it in a good way. The sound design also really helped with this, and especially during the mobile suit battles, it gave them a lot of heft and impact. And talking about those battles, after having seen the trailers, I was worried about how the 3D animation was going to blend in with the traditional animation in this movie, and to my surprise, for the most part, it blended in beautifully. Especially Especially the night scenes with the lighting effects looked absolutely stunning and gorgeous. Even the mobile suit battles that I was so worried about looked great for the most part. And man, the way that the environment reacted to the mobile suit battles was a visual treat. Of course, that is not to say that everything was perfect either. In some cases, like the smoke effects, it was quite obvious that there was CGI, and it was even enough to get me momentarily out of the zone. Fortunately though, this never lasted too long. What also struck me as a bit weird was that, in my opinion, the Gundam battle that was so heavily teased in the trailers was one of the visual low points of the movie. The CGI is passable, and the movements of both Gundams were quite stiff compared to some of the other scenes of the movie. Although, I guess this is partially because of just how beautiful the rest of the movie is. On to the story then, which was also something that I was really happy about. In typical Gundam fashion, we are presented with two sides that both have their shades of grey. We've got the Earth Federation with its usual corrupt depiction, and then we've got Mofti, the terrorist organization, with its own problems. Even though we get a lot of scenes showing them in a positive light, due to their very nature as a terrorist organization, their actions involve innocent civilians, and at the end of the day, it is questionable how much they will truly be able to achieve with their way of fighting. And I also liked how this was actually brought up by some of the characters in the movie. Even Captain Kenneth Slegg turned out to be a much more complex character than I thought at first, and I actually found myself warming up to him much more than I was expecting. The dude even offered a terrorist a chair after he fell down on the ground. Such a friendly fellow. But I can't say too much more about the story at the moment. Since this is the first movie of a trilogy, we are left with much more questions than answers, and that is another thing that this movie did really well. It got me engaged, it left me wanting more, and especially about characters like Gigi, and shockingly enough, even Hathaway. So if you haven't watched it yet, I would highly recommend you to at least give this first movie a shot. Even if you haven't seen any other UC series, I think you should be fine for the most part. Some details might be lost on you, but the movie focuses mostly on Hathaway and his rebellion against the Earth Federation. 
and along the way, I feel that they did put in enough exposition and flashbacks to kind of get newcomers up to speed, but at the same time, not boring the more veteran watchers to death. On to the spoiler stuff now, which will mostly consist of some notes that I took on specific scenes that stood out to me. The first one was after their flight was hijacked and Hathaway and Gigi are sitting in an almost completely empty launch, with the exception of some security guys. Gigi then proceeds to talk in a normal conversational voice about how she knows that Hathaway is Mafti. Perhaps not the best idea, all things considered. Next up then, we get to see Gigi's pink limo, or as I called it in my notes, Relina's limo. Although upon closer inspection, it's just the same base color. My final comment then concerning Gigi is that Hathaway doesn't really know how to handle women. He accidentally walked in on her as she's changing, and he just shrugs it off like it's no big deal. Where is the typical anime, you pervert slap, when you really want one? And now for some cool machines that I just quickly wanted to highlight. That Manhunter Jagan with the crotch mounted machine gun was a pretty neat idea, although I don't think I'd want to be the gunner. It's gotta suck if that thing gets caught up in a terrorist attack and it falls down. That's gotta hurt. <laughs> The second custom Jagan then that we saw was the Firefighter Jagan, and my first reaction was, again, cool. My second thought then was that wouldn't it be a better idea to have an older mobile suit like the Gym 2 serving as a firefighting machine? Like they still had quite a few of those hanging around and the Jagan was a more frontline machine. But then, upon closer inspection, it looks like those firefighter Jagans aren't actually dedicated firefighting units, but rather they are an as of yet unidentified ground combat Jagan, of which that previously mentioned Manhunter Jagan is a customized version. And those things have a new backpack that looks like it functions very similarly to the backpack of the Ground Gundam, which allows them to equip various add on backpacks, and in this case for the Jagan, a firefighter backpack. The final machine then that caught my attention was the Gustav Carl, or more appropriately, the fuck up Carl, because dear god these things are incompetent. They're supposed to be the latest and greatest Federation mass production machine, and yet in every single anime and movie they're in, they've been getting tossed around as badly as the gyms from 0080. But I guess that is just the fate of many grunts on the big screen. And at least they made it on the screen. Unlike the machine in the next scene that I wrote about. So after Kenneth offered Gaumon a chair, we have a time skip to kinda simulate his unconsciousness. Like, I understand what they were going for here, but at the same time, we lost out on some great old mobile suit fan service. Prior to Gaumon losing consciousness, there was a submarine closing in on Mafti's base, and then after he regained consciousness, we see a pilot complaining about how he had to pilot an antique machine to get rid of said submarine. But we never actually got to see the antique, and I would have loved to see an old amphibious mobile suit fight in the quality of this movie. But hey, you can't have everything. I want to end this video then by complaining about the end of the movie. Why the hell did they think it was a good idea to end it with a really bad CGI Hathaway walking? Anyways, that has been all for my first impressions and somewhat review of the first Hathaway's Flash movie. I really enjoyed it, I had a great time watching it, and I cannot wait for the second and the third one. Let me know what you thought down below, and as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Also, Maceflower is best girl.